We are working on several breaking news stories this morning. While you were sleeping, roads blocked off after a person is killed in a deadly crash. We're live on the scene. And crews rushed to the scene of this apartment fire. The latest on both of these breaking news stories from overnight coming up in just a moment. This broadcast is sponsored in part by Hendrick Automotive Group. Live from Charlotte, this is WBTV News on your side. Good morning and welcome to WBTV News this morning. I'm Christine Spiro. I'm John Carter. Good morning. I'm Lindsay DePass is in for Al again this morning. Doesn't uh, feel as cold out today. No. no. This morning. It's it's nice. Yesterday we got down to 39. You may remember mm -hmm. uh, for yesterday morning. That was the coldest morning we had had since the early part of April. We ended up around 76 for yesterday afternoon's high. So ended up pretty comfortable and a little bit milder for the second half of our day. As far as this morning, though, those morning temperatures, we've got more of them running in the 40s. So in Charlotte, we're 46 right now. We do have a couple of 30s from Morganton at 39, same in Wadesboro and 37 in Boone. But overall, the general 24 hour temperature change in most spots on average is about one to three degrees or so above yesterday morning's 4 a.m. temp. So we won't end up quite as chilly for this morning's low. Other than that, it is a clear start. No fog or visibility issues this morning and this afternoon. We'll add on a few more degrees to yesterday's high. So that gets us close back to near 80 for our Friday afternoon, a little bit warmer to lead us into the weekend. So we'll talk more about your weekend forecast and then more importantly, it looks like a pretty active start to the early part of next week. We'll have details on that ahead in just a few minutes. John and Christine back to you. All right, it is 431 now and uh, we are following some breaking news where a person was killed in a crash in North Charlotte. Yeah, Kristen Miranda in the alert center getting some of those details first. So you know what's happening out there. Kristen, what's the latest? Uh, Christine, details are pretty limited right now, but I can tell you a couple of things. This happened on Gibbon Road at Old Statesville Road, which is right here. If I go ahead and shrink this down a little bit, you get a better idea of where we're talking about here. We have a live picture that we can go ahead and show you. This is a fatal accident, and all CMPD is telling us at this point is that it happened just before 2.30 this morning. Officers responding to the scene and found one person dead because of this accident. Now, they have not sent out any additional information as far as how many vehicles might have been involved, uh, what the identity of the person is uh, who was killed, but we do know our Caroline Hicks is on the scene and she says that police are keeping her pretty far back. This is about as close as you can get, but you can see the significant police presence there, CMPD presence, presence there on the scene. So again, one person killed in this crash at Old Statesville and Gibbon Roads. We're gonna keep an eye on this. We'll have live reports as we go throughout the morning on this breaking news. Back to you. All right. With Chris Larson now, get the latest on the traffic situation. All right, John, thank you. First alert traffic is sponsored by Toyota of North Charlotte. So there you have Old Statesville Road, the accident just off of Old Statesville. Gibbon Road is blocked. St Old Statesville Road is open. So again, if you travel Gibbon Road trying to make your way up to Old Statesville, you're not going to be able to do that. That section is blocked. Your alternates would be Christenberry Road, Christenberry Road up to West Sugar Creek and then to W.T. Harris and around or the opposite is true. If you're coming up Old Statesville trying to make your way around on uh, there to Gibbon Road. You're going to have to work your way up to W.T. Harris and then down on West Sugar Creek this morning. As we broaden out and take in the overall commute here, most of our majors looking just fine early here into our commute this morning. No major delays. A few slowdowns South Boulevard also over onto W.T. Harris and maybe just a few little light slowdowns there on Independence Boulevard. That is a check of your first alert traffic. John, back over to you. All right, more breaking news now in South Charlotte, where apartments caught fire on Leafcrest Lane. Fire crews rushed to the scene, were able to get the fire under control in about 25 minutes. No one was injured. The cause of the fire is under investigation right now. This morning, police are investigating a shooting in West Charlotte. Want to show you what that scene looked like last night. Officers say one person was shot in the leg here on Carroll Avenue. They were taken to the hospital and is expected to be okay. So far, no one has been arrested. And we're also working to learn more on a second shooting. This one in Southwest Charlotte on Crestridge Drive. So far, we know one person was taken to the hospital with serious injuries. Their name has not been released, and it's unclear what led up to the shooting. Police have not made any arrests. They are still investigating. This morning, we're learning more information on an incident at a local middle school where a gun and ammunition were found in the backpack of a student. This happened at Martin Luther King Jr. Middle School in Charlotte. 
Police say the student is 13 years old. WBTV's Alex Giles spoke with parents and students. He joins us now with more. A student I talked to outside of the school this evening hadn't even heard about this incident with the gun, but he told me it's not the first time they've had trouble at this school. Seventh grader Gerson Mendez says he knows lots of students here at Martin Luther King Junior Middle School, but he doesn't know who was responsible for bringing a weapon in their backpack Thursday. They could just start shooting anyone, shoot kids. You never know, they could have started walking around the shoe and we could have been victims. Luckily, it never reached that point. Sources tell us a gun and ammunition were found in the student's backpack, but the gun was not loaded. Mother Danica Truesdale lives nearby and doesn't like what she's hearing. It's scary because I have, I have three kids. To think that I'm at home or at work and somebody done brought a gun to school, just the fact that it could have been loaded, you know, that could have been somebody child, an innocent child that, you know, got hurt. A note from the school principal was sent out to families Thursday. It claims there was never a threat to students. It also reads, quote, please make sure you check your child's backpack for any inappropriate items that should not be brought to school. We have to really, you know, look at our kids nowadays because the kids that's growing up nowadays is just getting into a lot of things and hanging around a lot of people. Gerson Mendez says he's heard about fights happening at his school in the past. He doesn't like the violence and he's got a message for the troublemakers. They should think about other kids, their parents, family, themselves. Like if they get caught in a and the, all the police is going to be outside and they're going to get arrested. The most important thing, no one was hurt at this school. Reporting in Northeast Charlotte, Alex Giles, WBTV, on your side. And this is not the first time a student's had a gun in a backpack at MLK Middle. Back in 2010, police said a 14-year-old boy pointed a gun at fellow students and then squeezed off a shot in the air. No one was hurt. The manufacturer who repossessed a five-year-old's grave marker plans to return it by tonight. Tuesday, he announced he'd return it within 24 hours of confirmation from the Leatherman family that they wanted it put back. Both sides have been communicating through the director of the cemetery in Hickory. J.C. Schof told us the marker was not paid in full, though the family claims they didn't know they owed more money when they made changes to it. Schof has since apologized. Still to come. An arrest made in the murder of a college baseball player. We're going to hear from the mother of the victim and what she has to say about her son's accused killers. Plus, a school bus catches fire with several students inside. If anyone was injured and a closer look at the damage, next. And we'll continue to follow two breaking news stories for you this morning. This is a live look where one person was killed following a car crash. Be sure to stay with us throughout the morning as we continue to bring you the latest updates. It's 438, 22 minutes before 5 o'clock.